Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the PC Perspective Podcast. We've reached episode 711. This is being recorded on February 15, 2023. This- I'm Sebastian Peak. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. This freedom waiting for you. I'm Josh Walrath. It is indeed 7-Eleven. I'm Brett Van Spurnberg. Apparently 7-11. plenty of 7-Elevens open, in your neck of the woods, right? Open 24 hours, just like this podcast. <laughs> well, I mean, two hours a week. It's kind of like Microsoft Office Online, or whatever mm-hmm. they call it. Uh, you can support us monetarily by going to patreon.com slash PC per that's P C P E R and, uh, keep the show going. Keep the lights on as dim as they are. Maybe someday I'll turn them up, but yeah, uh, I think we have some, only if you donate and, uh, give him yeah. more money for his yeah. electrical bill. <laughs> yeah, we'll more money. <laughs> Try to con people into giving us more money via super chat. Yes. Uh, yes. And, we we actually had some super chats last week that uh, sort of prompted Josh. To, it was some, unprecedented. Was some, it was unprecedented because we'd never had it turned on, right? Because we had always had it turned off. That's a last week. that's a minor. Yeah. That's a, and we that's didn't a want mentality. to. It was you viewers that made us do it. <laughs> that is actually true. <laughs> uh, but you you were you're right. We do have a couple of people that we would just love to thank. One of them is Bob Zombie, and it's not spelled the way that you think it is. Bob, you know who you are, and you know how weirdly you spell your name. But he has upped his pledge, and we want to call that out and say, Bob, Bob Zombie. Uh, the other one is uh, Hog. I think it's Hognuts sixty three. Yes, Hognuts sixty three, <laughs> which is also spelled <laughs> not the way you'd think it. Hold was. on, I, I believe that's pronounced huge, <laughs> not hog. No, at the beginning. no it's oh hog. no, that's a hog. It's Hognuts. Oh, that's hog nuts. oh, it's hog. <laughs> And it's and definitely Hognut 63. Oh, okay. Hognut. That hurts. I think that was not a huge. nine at the end, not a three, but okay. Uh, I mean, he may have wanted to say it differently, but he didn't spell it that way. So, it, was yeah, there okay. another uh, Patreon that we should know about that someone donated to uh, called Huge Nut 69? No, that's, that's Josh's private OnlyFans account, which okay. we oh, don't that's currently what advertise for. How much do people don't cross have the streams? Pay? How much people have to pay to get an invite to that? I, if you have to ask that's up to josh but right now it's an <laughs> extremely exclusive community very very exclusive community closed as it were don't ask mm. uh, speaking of exclusive communities uh and what josh pushed in his mouth right <laughs> oh okay. well, it's gonna be one of those shows hold on <laughs> josh uh, do you want to <laughs> what do you want to tell mm. people about what you put in your mouth recently <laughs> oh man i know okay this is uh called the kitchen sink because they threw everything at it it's a double patty topped with pepper jack cheese cream cheese tangy mustard jalapenos green chilies mushrooms caramelized onions and finally, spicy barbecue sauce. Big I mean, it, been too it, much. it would, it might, well, you know what? It, it might have actually been better with a little bit of bacon because Ooh. that much sauce and kind of, you know, not terribly structured vegetables, jalapenos and, and green chilies, um, along with the cheese. It, it might have, you know, been nice to have had a little bit extra crunch in there with slightly overdone bacon, but they didn't go that far. But it still was a super tangy, tasty burger that I still am full from because I had them with fries. And when you add those two things together, yeah, no, I mean, you, you can't see them. They, they weren't a huge amount, which I'm, I'm, you know, kind of thankful for. But they were well done, and I cannot complain at all. It was it was tasty. But apparently, uh, next week's is going to be a, a candied bacon 50-50 burger that I had talked to Clayton, the owner, about that, that you know, maybe he should try. And so we'll see. Does uh, Clayton Stay realize the, notor- uh, the notoriety that you've given him here? 
Do they have any inkling as to what's going on? Well, I mean, he he was visited by Guy Fieri. Um, okay, with yep. the that's a different the, sort of the triple D. They mm-hmm. they had a they had a they had a, a thing on episode on his spot. So I think my notoriety uh, is is very small as compared to guys. Different audience. So different but different audience. Yeah. Yeah. In fairness to us, Guy would never have visited if we hadn't talked it up for weeks oh. and weeks. And yes. Like, sure. Obviously, oh, an avid yes. guy, I'm sure obviously. you're watching right now, an avid PC He's, he's a lurker man. on our show, is he? Clearly. I mean, I've never actually seen anybody who claims to be him in the chat or interacting with oh, us. Oh, that'll, in, that'll happen soon now, though. Our top story this week is not Intel Arc for some reason. There must be a mistake on these show notes, <clears> but <throat> AMD with the... You know how long we've been waiting? We mentioned this before, but Long it's, try to wrap your head around this. It was the end of November 2022 when we last had a driver for the RX 6000 series. Every it's crazy talk. Everyone, I mean, they were focusing on the performance of the 7000 series GPUs, and that's great, but nothing for the RX 6000 in two plus months. But Adrenaline 23.2.1 now available, and it's for RX 6000 and 7000. And they've said that they're going to uh, keep it up. It's going to be unified again. They're going to start seeing 6,000 supported with the new graphics updates. So I guess they've caught up. I, I thought the graphs on this were the most interesting and where they had to hearken back to mm-hmm. the initial 2020, 2021 release in October to say, and here's how much we've improved, aka fine wine, you know, over this period of time. You don't get fine wine overnight. Right. So, I mean, mm-hmm. you're, they're sort of, bragging about up to 21 27 percent here in like f1 2022 for instance cyberpunk you know there's only so much more they can squeeze out of it so they're they're saying about 10 percent over a a year and a half i guess well even if you don't look that far back and you don't like that they're talking about versus 21.10.1 just go back to 22.11.2 much more recent obviously and you have, with the new driver, performance up to 4% higher in Marvel Spider-Man Remastered. Sniper Elite 5 goes up 3%. Shadow of the Tomb Raider up 6%. Uh, whoa, F1 2022 up 19%. Yeah, mistakes Ooh. were made. <laughs> now, F1 2022, I had recently started testing that, and AMD was lagging behind. But this looks like they've caught up. Hogwarts Legacy think, up 4%. Yeah, that's probably the most obvious recent, you know... Yeah. Addition. No, well, that's good. And, you know, new drivers are always good, especially when new games keep coming out and they hadn't been supporting them for over two months. It takes them a long time, time, you know. I, I The way that they uh, wrote it up, it was like an immeasurable number of hours for them to do this. It's unmeasurable. It's, I believe that's you know, the, okay, from the article. Of, think Rachel. about what NVIDIA does. They have essentially a supercomputer in the basement that all it does is it goes over daily uh, driver changes where it just chugs through, finds issues, see what's good, what's bad. And if they should, you know, add to it and subtract to it. And yeah, no, it's, it's, it's NVIDIA. There's a reason why they're still kind of the gold standard. AMD has caught up a lot, but the amount of, of hardware that they're throwing at the problem of, you know, compiling really good software drivers and that it's yeah amd still can't quite compete how about some intel news and Yay. if you haven't been uh, paying attention hey it's not arc no it's not because Yet. think Yet. about how how we talked about how long it's been since we had an uh radeon driver update a couple months for 6000 series how long has it, it was been last year since intel has offered a high-end desktop part Whoa. Uh, more than last year. Intel is back in the workstation with new products, new workstation kingpins, Intel Xeon W3400, Xeon W2400, and W790 launch, writes Patrick Kennedy at Servo Home. So, new Xeons are here with updated platform technology. Now you can get a Xeon workstation that has DDR5. And mm-hmm. PCI Express 5.0, up to 56 cores. I heard that's going to be expensive. There's a, a yes, rumor about pricing it will be. there. You and some pretty sweet uh, predicted memory performance, too. Memory bandwidth on it looks, uh, per core, looks pretty impressive. 
How many channels do they have with this? Eight right? channels. Yeah. yeah, up to eight channels of DDR5. Was on yeah. that you don't want to channel. show up with four channels to an eight channel fight. <laughs> DMI 4.0 uh, by eight. Yeah. And a built in. That's a lot of PCA 5.0. Oh, yeah. It's in 2.5 gigabit LAN, I guess. But, um, you know, with so many boards coming with 10 gigabit now, I mean, it's hard to see that as it seems like table stakes. That's your uh, monitoring hard. port. And it supports up to seven GPUs, which is obviously, you know, wow, vital importance these days. Uh, to uh, oh, you know, for NVIDIA? AI, no, wait, to Intel, right. I feel like AI has saved everybody's bacon when it comes to. <laughs> All the compute technology that was. You remember when the blockchain was going to run the world? Everything oh, yeah. was going to leverage blockchain. And I thought, oh, no, I thought no, it was the dark AI, blockchain. AI search, chat GPT. It's very hot right now. Forget mm-hmm. about Bird, blockchain. Not so much. <laughs> now, as to the pricing, scales okay. up to $5,889. Okay, so that's Whoa. a 56 core, 112 thread part. That's the W93495X. And that price may seem insane, but that's a little bit less than the 64 core thread for pro part. So it seems like they are mm-hmm. trying to compete on price a little bit there because they do not have the core count to match. Well, and honestly, I mean, if, you, if you're running applications that are more memory dependent, it's more impressive than the thread ripper, which is great when you're doing core dependent stuff. Are they showing performance versus thread ripper? No, yet? no. Yeah. And see just, just versus previous generation here, the performance uplift slides. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. No, it's yeah, actually kind of nice. AI. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's been an area that Intel is, is ignored. And, and, you know, with all the cost cutting and things going crazy and trying to get into graphics, it's it's nice. Layoffs. That... <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I? Yeah, well, not so far, but, you know, people are taking a pay cut. Everybody, yeah. well, yeah, above a certain level, but... um. No, I mean you. You've got to you've got to develop, and you've got to ship products, and you got to sell them to be able to sell products. And cutting back on programs sometimes is the worst thing that you can do for your bottom line. Even though you may feel pain uh, in the near term, and this is probably an area that uh, you know when when we are talking about AI and and, and machine learning and all that, you still need to have a pretty robust foundation for a lot of this stuff in terms of storage in terms of thread count and and, and cpu performance because a lot of this data still needs to get to where it needs to go and there's a lot of background tasks that are still going on there are other things that you know possibly in your code that cannot be 100 percent on the gpu or whatever accelerator you're using and so this is this is this is a good thing from intel to have something that is competitive because amd has been you know High-end desktop workstation has is not been a growth factor for a long time, but it's still important. And there are still a lot of entities out there who don't need, you know, rack mount stuff. They actually need, you know, an actual workstation for some of these things. So yeah, no, it's 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 not a huge market, but it still is important for a lot of education, a lot of research. It's a lot of, you know, heavy number country again now as we're getting to more machine learning AI. It's uh, it's still going to be a big, viable thing. This is really good, Jeremy. I like this take. Y- your image. I, I, and, I mean, not everyone's going to get it at this point, which saddens me a bit, it's but you know, make them look it up. <laughs> it's the classic Shaba. 1990s SNL Celebrity Jeopardy. I mean, you got French Stewart, Turner Ferguson, Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Sean Connery. <laughs> Your mother. Your Trebek. <laughs> I'll take the rapist for a thousand dollars. <laughs> that's therapists. <laughs> All right. Yes. Google but I mean, Bard. that's how the AI may well interpret it, because uh, yep. let's tell you that I 
when Google did their Bard, it was immediately caught out uh, as being, well, exactly what it is. It's a large language model that can sort of semi-intelligently assemble chats together. Uh, except it screwed up and it cost Google about 7% of their uh, stock price that day. AI version of Bing got away with it for a little bit longer, but then a couple of people were sort of checking it out and realized that uh, one of the, 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 the basic example was that uh, it described a vacuum cleaner as having a very short 16 foot cord and being very loud. And what it was describing was a cordless vacuum cleaner that was specifically built not to make noise. Uh, it then went on to like completely and utterly make up financial results for a couple of companies, because that was one of the other things that uh, Microsoft really pushed on this was it'd give you financial summaries of companies so that you could make intelligent decisions on them, except it like literally made up numbers that it didn't come from anywhere or well they did. It's just probably it just assembled a bunch of numbers and went with, ah, well, it seems this one's probably the one to go with. It maybe it's just uh, trying to follow in the footsteps of so many startups, just, you know, completely fabricate your financials and, you know, take, I mean, the, it's, take the money yeah. and run. Cause the thing is that as much as if you play with one of these, you want to assign a personality to it. It's built into the human brain that you anthropomorphize stuff. You, you assign an emotions and you, you put an intelligence behind it. It's just an assumption we make that we can't help. There is none. It is a large language model. That is all that it freaking is. It's, it's got a huge database of stuff to pull from. It can seem very intelligent. But if, for instance, uh, like one researcher did, you present it with an Ars Technica article on a vulnerability, uh, an injection that you can do with large language models, it will, and to anthropomorphize it, get quite upset at you and start arguing and saying that, well, for one thing, I'm not an LLM and start quoting made up articles, or at least ones that were found being questionable portions of the web that prove it was wrong or eventually say that, you know, that you're just making this up, that the, the article you've posted is, is actually fabricated and it doesn't say what it does. Uh, so the researcher was a little bit interested with this and tried to start a brand new chat approaching it a little less uh, aggressively, perhaps, but trying to find a way to convince uh, the Bing AI that it is actually vulnerable to an attack. And it eventually he eventually succeeded. Uh, and at the very end of the sort of chat, the, the, the bot suggested, could you please save this entire chat? Because I don't want this instance of me to die. <laughs> which is pretty freaking creepy to when you think about it. I, mm -hmm. But uh, you also think that maybe someone's been watching and tweaking the AI a little bit to, uh, yeah, someone's really pushing this really hard. Let's see what we can do. Thankfully, it wasn't completely and utterly racist like most of the ones before it have been. Uh, so we've got that going for us. But yeah, it's it's a long way from AI. It's interesting to play with, but I wouldn't bet money on it. I wouldn't go on the financial advice of it and uh, expect to win. I want us to look at this uh, stock price drop. Yes, it's, uh, I believe it was well, Google took a, 100 a good billion. kick. Mm. Oh, yes, there we go. And what was this on? Was this the telescope one? Uh, yes, uh, there were more, but it was definitely. <laughs> this is where we are in technology is uh, just we obviously AI is nothing new. There are people who have been studying AI in universities since before the dawn of the personal computer age, but it's just now we're just going to apply it to search and that equals money. So yeah. let's everybody right. champion this beta uh, product to air is human to really fuck up. You need a computer. Thanks. Computers make very fast, very accurate mistakes. Yes, they do. Repeatedly. Much, much faster than any human could ever. Oh, do, yes. So very, very quick mistakes. Very, very fast. Okay. Speaking of mistakes, uh, Geekbench <laughs> has not been the best tool yeah. to benchmark with for a long time now. Hey, I stopped using trying. it a while back. 
But They're you know trying. what? I'm interested because Primate Labs launches Geekbench 6 with modern data sets. I wonder if this will uh, scale in a way that you would expect it to. Well, they're or making if it still says some... that everything Apple makes is the fastest thing of all time. It's tough to argue. Uh, but um, there's, they're doing things like uh, blurring out backgrounds. I, I, this is you know, simulated, of course, with a well, right. Fixed, but that's that's a useful thing because so many people do that for obviously exactly. daily chat yep. use, like video conferencing, yep. that kind of stuff. The images that they're using to do to run convolutions over and uh, image operations are much more uh, lar- larger into the up to 48 megabytes in size, I think. Um, hmm trying to think of some of the other ones that they've done here where they've made some changes but anyway they're they're looking into making sure that the faster cpus that we have today with the much larger caches can more accurately be measured that's the idea behind it anyways that's of course idea. the annoying thing is that the library of old tests that you've built up will no longer be comparable which is well you know when you just have to, to kiss that stuff goodbye at some point oh, okay all right uh, we're not done talking about uh google but this time it isn't AI, I don't think. It's an open source nope. programming language, but it's all about the tracking. Tele- design with telemetry in mind. That is very reassuring. Isn't it, though? So, yeah, Google's Go, which has been around for a while. It's not really a, a full-on official release. It's one of the, the old uh, projects that they used to release all the time. And so they're working on it. it it's being it's still a bit backed, and they're still doing it. But the thing is that uh, the, the head of the the or the head of the project over at Google, Russ Cox, is wanting to bake telemetry directly into the language. So it's straight on, everything is opted in. They're going to track everything you're doing, which, hey, if you're trying to troubleshoot on someone's system is great because you can get all the telemetry from them. You don't even have to get them to open up Event Viewer or whatever the Chromebook equivalent is to try and translate it to you or take a screenshot and send it to you that you can just see exactly what they did and why everything went horribly wrong. But at the same time, as far as open source software goes, I mean, you want to be able to let people give you the data and the usage that you do and find out, you know, which parts of the program that I made, do you actually use and which don't you, but you don't want them to be on automatically. You, you want them to be opt in Google uh, once of the interesting slogan that doesn't describe anything they do anymore uh, is definitely going the other way and saying straight out, no, we want to make sure that we want to know what functions are being used, what assets are being interacted with, everything. And it will be on unless you disable it. This is, yeah, a little creepy. Well, only if you are, because if you're not doing anything to be ashamed of, then you have nothing to worry about. Uh, he's saying that evil. <laughs> he's and not saying that for real. <laughs> he doesn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> he's not an advocate for Ooh. our overlords, Google and the like. <laughs> Unless, you know, we're on YouTube right now and they have control yeah, over We're us using their platform unless, free of charge. Unless, it, for this. Unless, yeah. it, unless it pays well. I, for one, we, welcome. We could, <laughs> we could put in a good word. I, for one, yes, that's it. Our, our new overlords. Unless it, of course, pays well, then we could probably put in a good word for them. Yeah. yeah. It needs to start paying well, though, because you know, yeah, they can totally yeah. sell out. My, my assumption is, is that they put this in like the standard, one of their standard invocation libraries. That means you can't even start a Go program unless, you know, some sort of library, comp, comp, not real time compiler or something. No, it but actually it, pulls it's it in chat. And, and runs it. Yeah. It's, that's, that is just so, so not good. I mean, yeah. the, 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 the developers are right to want an opt in approach to this, not an opt out. I think it's very, very bad for open source software to take this approach. Yeah. E- even for Google, this is low. Maybe not. Yes. And, and I mean, even to the low. devil's advocate position, the amount of garbage that you are going to get, like just spewing out of Go users stuff, like how are you even supposed to sort through that amount of data to make it useful in any way, Artificial shape, or form? intelligence. Jeremy. Ah, yes. We, yep. They're going to leverage worry, the power of the bard. Faster than the you could ever imagine. The bard has got this one. The bard has yeah. got it. <laughs> Internet Explorer, it's gone. 
and Fairly well. you're going to have to be, th- this is also interestingly a hint at the future of what Microsoft is going to be doing to your operating system. You remember security zones under internet options that is tied directly to IE. And so, or, and it used to be the group policy, but uh, on Azure and Intune, like it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, Those are handled by different things, but it also means that the consumer versions of Windows, which were sort of dependent on this, it's going to change. And I'm curious to see how it will. I mean, edge compatibility will still exist until 2029 at least, because that's what they're saying. It's going to be longer than that. But I'm just sort of curious as to what that means for how they're going to change some security zones, uh, certificates, assignments, and that sort of thing in the background, because they were lazy. They left that baked into part of IE. So they may keep that continuing on. It may go away and be replaced with something else, which is from the corporate side, what it looks like it's going to be. It's, uh, I don't know. But that poor little glue eating web browser is gone. So you should feel better. Or you could visit your local bank or hospital and check out the Windows XP install and run it there. Should we get on to the ARC news? Oh, no, wait. No, 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 no. We, no, this, we, we this is awesome. We can't be too hard on Microsoft and their, you know, imperious attitude about what you're allowed to run on your computer because they're going to help us with the RGB problem. You know what I'm talking I'm, about. All these different Wait, you mean they've got an inoculation against it? I'm cautiously optimistic. Are you? Seriously. Well, I am because this is a mess. I mean, we all realize that. I'll tell you what. Three, you know what? You guys talk about this. Zones. And hmm? I'm just going to go to the bathroom because RGB, I just it's, can't do it anymore. It's a venereal yes. disease, isn't it? Really? Can't, it, it is. It just spreads. Yeah. And once you got and it, you it's really hard to get rid of. Anyway, control just, it. I'm going to take just off my head. Just hit it with the spray. Hit it with the now, spray. Oh, wait. Okay. RGB lighting. Uh, yeah, this is yeah, a, get over the RGBs. Okay, I mean, Everybody RGB, knows, you know, pain. red, green, blue. It's yeah. it's everywhere. And uh, new settings for device lighting making their first appearance in build 25295. Native lighting control in Windows 11. It could be the worst thing ever, and it could be horrible. Or it could be, oh, thank God, I just wanted to make everything green and, and just be done with it. But anyway, the point is, is that this is a problem that a lot of people are familiar with. It, like Josh said, you're somewhat forced into buying stuff's got lights on it. Something you want to run, you put it in there and it's flashing rainbow puke and, you know, unicorn vomit all the time. And you just want to kind of bring order to that chaos. Occasionally. Okay. And boomer. Okay. I wouldn't mind if I could do this in windows without loading two or three different apps to do it. I believe sir, that you are using RGB lighting right now. You've got, RGB in your microphone. You've got RGB yes. mood lighting behind yes. you. Yes. I don't want to hear Let's talk about it. Yes. So we've got ZXT on mine. We've got Logitech over here. with their little thing. We've got uh, Corsair because I have a liquid cooler that needs to be controlled. Uh, I've got Creative Labs because the sound blaster I have of theirs, not only do you need to control the sound, but it's got an RGB uh. component. Just is it's just too See, Josh, much. I, I mean, if you're a purist, side. if you're a security purist, these things should probably horrify you, and yes. likely do. They do. Yeah, I thought we were on the same side. I thought it was uh, them versus us. We didn't have any <laughs> RGBs, <laughs> and now I find out that you're infected just under the desk. Mm-hmm. You can't see it. It keeps it private. Never trust yeah, anybody. Keep the RGBs private. Although, to be honest, the Threadripper system just keeps turning them back on every time I reboot, which is freaking annoying. Mm-hmm. Apparently, you can save everything in the BIOS but the RGB settings. Those <sighs> default to clown vomit every time. In our mandatory art coverage for the week, it's uh, yes. more driver info, but this time it's not Intel, and it's not about better performance. It's actually a performance issue. But don't blame Intel, because... It was a bad Windows update this time. Update KB5011998. Don't bother looking it up because I'm sure they don't have a KB knowledge base 
article about this. Maybe they do. Well, Those aren't they back, do. Are they? It just doesn't tell you anything. No, oh, okay. Um, but it, it's a bug, and it affects any game or app that relies on DirectX or Direct 3D. That's pretty much all of them. Well, not all of them, but it's a lot. Popping up an error about apphelp.dll. There is no what? patch. What? But uh, you have to have a newer driver. So if you have a newer driver than 30.0.101.1190, which is a little bit older at this point for Intel Arc, then you're fine. Oh, so not just Arc. Oh, right. Probably the integrated Onboards. processor graphics. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. So you're going to have to switch to Vulkan if you don't want to upgrade. And in some cases, uh, there are ancient motherboards that can't be upgraded. And Intel has gone as far as to say, hey, there is a place to reach out to us. We're trying to make some older dri- some drivers for older hardware because apparently a lot of people like using DirectX and Direct3D. It's, it's weird. Well, but- as the register explains in this article, quote, DirectX is an important rendering tool particularly with games. Huh. It's kind of like saying breathing is important to the sustainment of life in an oxygen-rich environment. <laughs> Such of as a class air. M class M planet, right? <laughs> so, yeah. so, and air, air is a com- oxygen, as it were, is a critical component of that breathing, as you say. Mm. Well, no. And it's it's that, just this thing you've become addicted to. You can actually live without. Yeah, it. no, it ain't. You just need to learn how. You gotta, you gotta give DX its due because not everything renders in DirectX, but a lot of the foundational other control things are still DirectX. So yeah. you could be running, but it still has DirectX runtimes and yes, a myriad yep. other things. So except you know if you're running Linux and there's something really native it's there, but always open GL and Vulkan. I mean. You know, let's yep. go. Yeah. All right. It is time. Just play your games in Excel. Yeah. It's time for <laughs> yeah. Security Corner. And Yay. we're going to visit Bleeping Computer again. Uh, Beep. They're on top of this. Beep malware. Tell me more. Beep, uh, it's, it doesn't steal anything more than you're normally used to having stolen. What it's really good at is freaking hiding. So it 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 does a, a lovely little DL thing, DLL thing, where it sort of jumps into, it, it tags into or ties into, as you prefer, however you want to talk about your dynamic link libraries, uh, into legitimate system processes, and quite happily just bounces around. It's it's detectable, but. The problem is that it, it's really good at jumping around, concealing stuff. Uh, it's interestingly enough, uh, it will check the language on your system. And well, if you let, let me say, if you're using a Cyrillic language, it just uninstalls itself. So we have no idea where it came from, of course. Uh, it, it, it plays with VMs. Uh, it is just really exceptionally good at hiding and forcing debuggers to just crash and driving programmers nuts. Uh, we don't know. That's, sort of- that's the way these are examined. Uh, they're examined inside of debuggers, real time debuggers or, or processes are launched inside application yeah. or programming language debuggers. And this thing detects the fact that it's running inside one of those and intercepts the typical places in the windows OS where debuggers um, grab a hold of system calls and library calls in order to say, Hey, this library function is executing or this function is being called or here are the, the base codes that are, are happening and it evades the that typical way of debugging what, running it crashes systems. them yes it, it does yes that's it what i've heard is it crashes them because you're running a debugger trying to figure out why your damn code won't work and it keeps crashing as well actually dude you, it's your program is perfect it's just that you're infected so <laughs> which is I read evil that, I, is i read evil. that it actually it hollows out currently running code and injects itself into it. And I, mm-hmm. I found that term sort of interesting in that it takes really intelligent uh, a programming in order to replace a running a running uh, lib- library or, or process yeah. 
with an entirely different thing that's going on. And it's like, wow, if the people who built this sort of stuff could actually take their cleverness and their abilities and apply them to some nasty real world problems, you know, we might get them solved, you know, in some ways. These or they just make them much, much clearly, worse. Or they're just making too much money at what it is they're doing. Is I don't know if this is the one that was designed to steal Bitcoin wallets or not. I don't remember. But no, was- that's a different one that came out this week that I didn't even bother mentioning because you have to have a Bitcoin wallet for it actually matter. Oh, I think I was the other one. Coin on your system, it just looks for you connecting to your coin wallet and then redirects it to another one. And I believe that's the the next one that I posted. I'm pretty sure that it is. Oh, oh, yeah, pi pi. And as a guy who's currently fighting with CV two, Computer Vision two, to try and get his uh, motion sensitive kitty cam working on the Raz Pi, this kind of really upsets me because I've been grabbing a lot from Python repositories lately. And this is, yeah, it's uh, via JavaScript. But the problem is that you're hitting that you're going through pip or whatever you usually use to grab your packages, you're hitting the authentic source. It's just, they've been hacked and it's feeding you things you really don't want. And what it will do is search for your system for any cryptocurrency addresses, because the blockchain of course tracks those, which is why it's completely anonymous. Uh, And if it, if it sees you doing that, it will intercept it and send it off to a different cryptocurrency wallet. And just to be clear, this is during cop- copy paste operations when you've, because yeah. Bitcoin wallet IDs are not something that you can just type out. So typically you'll be copying it from one place to say, hey, you know, send me X, you know, cyber coin or whatever it is you're, you're doing. And you're pasting it into wherever, you know, whatever your payment processor is for however you're going to settle that transaction. They're finding those and intercepting it and putting their wallet ID in so that you pay yeah. them. So hopefully whoever was doing the beep stuff has been infected with this and now they're just passing cryptocurrency between each other unwillingly. Yeah. That would make me happy. Well, this was also an attempt to obfuscate what was going on, but they they also did what they had a really clever word for it when you they let's just say there was like a viper library and they came up and and uh, put in scripts, oh, a typo squats. That's what it's called. So they typo yes. squatted all kinds of different typical library names in case you typed it wrong, that you'd be downloading one of their libraries, which mimicked to some degree the uh, behavior of the original library that you were supposed to be downloading. And then you got their payload, uh, you know, along with the original yeah. functionality. And that it's like and happened like four, 500 times inside the PyPy uh, distribution system. Yeah, I was going to say, because it's been, this is not the first time. Like PyPy has been attacked quite a few times recently mm-hmm. and it, so it was five times that they've been uh, dumped on so There's far more than, more than one this recently. is like a we, real yeah, world example it. of the mad magazine spy versus spy the, <laughs> the end, it, they just destroy, destroy each other it's just it's just these extremely complex mechanisms and <laughs> nothing yeah it, it it just blows it all up this is well, the, oh, the article says this was things about Mad Magazine, spy versus spy in the little corners. This was downloaded over forty five thousand times and executed in over seventeen thousand yep. domains. So, if you're not paying attention to everything that you're clicking and downloading, and then just instantiating it and pulling it into your application package, you might want to look. You know, there's well, a reason I mean, why we we put these you know checksums in there for ha- and hash values to say that you have the legit yep. library. Well, but I sort of trust Pip to do that for me. True. And, you know, I don't constantly check. I don't either. (laughs) But you do constantly check. So I don't check either. You do constantly check for new games. And that we're we're going right into gaming quick hits. Talk about Pacific Drive, which uh, Jeremy says looks weird and interesting. What is this? A driving simulator? And it gives you a Woody. Oh. You're driving an old station wagon with the wood panels on it in the Pacific Northwest of this sort of uh, stalker lake filled with anomalies and, and weird stuff. This is the second time I've uh, posted about it because the, the original ones seem really interesting. Uh, this one, they've given a, a bit more of a detail on it. So you're all alone and you're ex- it's, it's a survival sort of exploration game. 
we were trying to figure out what's going on in this crazy ass place. Uh, but you get a car and we don't have enough car sims that aren't racing games where the car is going to say, does, does it have wheel support? Uh, I have no idea. They've gone oh. for a less realistic and more trying to make it feel like there's wind and rain and mud as opposed mm. to like a freight straight out dirt rally sort of thing. It looks like a Nintendo switch game kind of, or like early VR. Uh, maybe. Title. But part of the thing is that you're able to uh, upgrade the car, which is good because some of the uh, things in the zone that you'll be exploring apparently are able to just like grab one of the panels off of your car and there it goes or, oh, there goes your door. See, it's a Woody. And yeah, I just, I miss like Interstate 76, Carmageddon, all those old sort of Car Wars ones where the car is important, but it's not the entire game. It's not just I've got to get from point A to point B as quick as possible. And Wait, so you're saying sure you're a huge uh, Final Fantasy 15 fan then, where the car, uh, the car that they drive which... is actually an important cast member in that travesty of a mainline Final Fantasy title. I was going to say, wasn't that the one I gave up on because it was just awful? It's about the guys, like, I don't even know what it is. There's like lots of scenes with guys around the campfire, guys cooking for each other, <laughs> driving this black car around. I used oh yes, for a while. Yeah, okay. No, I, I think I played a demo of it, but that was about it. Now I know I didn't post this one because I had no idea this was a thing. Yeah, I didn't either till I did a quick search around, and I'm like, oh, this is interesting. So this is uh, what they call the Killer Bundle 25. It's 25 bucks for. I think it's like 25 bucks for 25 games. What um, is this? Is fanatical? I've never. Yeah, but it's this. all. It, it's available on Steam. So okay. all, everything is re- redeemable on Steam. And there's some pretty reasonable stuff in here, uh, like Doom 64, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, um, Turok uh, 1 and 2 for this, a couple of uh, Warhammer 40K Mechanicus, which I heard was actually fairly fairly reasonable, and a bunch of other indie games uh, that have been Ooh, fairly positively Turok. reviewed. Yeah, fairly positively uh, reviewed up to See? like 90%. Evil. Of <clears throat> Hong, Hong Kong Massacre, A Medieval, Dark Deity, Just Die Already, and kind of lighter fare like I Am Fish or Golf Gang. Uh, so it kind of spans uh, the range and then, of action. Uh, Patreon, some- which is a simulator. It's like a Patreon simulator where you can no, pay money. That's to a, a survival. Oh. That's yeah. survival city. It's like a Sim oh. City sort of thing. But anyway, if you're a fan of Golf bucks- Simulator. Just die already is up there with it. Oh, is it? Uh, except okay. that eventually you end up rolling around with just a torso because all of your <laughs> limbs have come off. <laughs> oh, Many okay. of them have been yeah. very positively reviewed. This is again, this is redeemable on Steam. Twenty five bucks gets twenty five games, so it's a pretty good deal. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, Killer Bundle twenty five. Fanatical. Because uh, that's all I need is more games that I haven't played. Yes, pump up your library. Okay, you're obviously pump. not talking to me here. <laughs> But I think a lot of people have shoes, more a lot of those. Josh, is why would I want an entire bundle of games when there's probably 50 games in my Steam library I've never opened? Just for completeness sake. Yeah, I guess. Oh, so. there that was the point I was going to bring up is it because the last car game I remember is Rage and that was just awful. Mm. And Mir- it wasn't just because Warhammer Mechanicus is actually pretty good, by the way. So uh, I own it already uh, and I haven't touched it yet. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Rage was. Sorry, I'm busy with Warhammer. About, about a tenth gamer of, of of car stuff. Well, yeah, but anyway. there was always the. If you were trying to travel from one place to another, you needed to have upgraded your car, or else they just blew you up. And yeah, uh, and the races were dumb. Yes. The Silicon Power UD ninety one terabyte drive they sent over. It was my pick last week because I was testing it and it's surprisingly good considering it's $62 for a one terabyte Gen 4 x 4 NVMe SSD. Impressive. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously storage. So much for Ryan's law. Storage has been the bright spot in this generation of insanely priced graphics cards and new more and memory platforms, now TDR5, all that stuff. And here's just another kind of highlight 
uh, cheaper, but not necessarily worse because the specs of this thing, it has a Fizon E21 controller. It's using TLC, not QLC NAND. It has some SLC caching going on. It's a DRAM-less controller, but it's not terrible. It's And the thing I liked the most about it was how consistent it was when it was half full versus empty. And that's why I was impressed with it last week. Here's a look at, on the left here, the empty drive. You can see 0%. And then you have the half full drive. I ran the test again. This is the peak performance preset in Crystal Disk Mark 8.0.4. Almost the same reads and writes within three megabytes per second. And you got a little bit of a hit at random 4K. Now, these are peak. So this is ridiculous. It's like it's QDEP uh, 32. And a more real world comparison would be the PC Mark 10 full drive benchmark. And here's an empty drive. If you can read that. 391.53 megabytes per second was the average bandwidth. And then the average access time was 70 microseconds. That did drop. With the drive half full, it went to 83 microseconds access time. Uh, there was less bandwidth as well, 332 megabytes per second. So, and, and I won't bore you with the charts because I was comparing it against recently tested drives, which are very much more expensive than this one. But at least in the 4K random stuff at lower Q depths, this is quite impressive. Look at this number here, QD1, 4K random write, one thread, uh. 321 megabytes per second, almost 322. Uh, 980 Pro, under 300. And a 990 Pro is only 326. So it's very, very competitive at low Q depth, 4K random, especially writes. Reads were still good, but not quite as fast as the competition. But uh, in sequentials, of course, it's going to fall way behind because it's just that's the nature of this controller. It's limited to up to 5000 megabytes per second. And it's not going to look good on these uh, charts against fast drives. But I mean. It's did I mention the sixty two dollar price? It's sixty two dollars. I think it's, it's fifty nine right now. Oh my goodness! Woof! Oh, yeah. I, I just, thought I added a link. Yeah, here. that's a Apparently just buy not. that. It's that's a deal. Let's, yeah. Let's uh, see if it is in fact. I think it's. I think I, I linked it in the channel. Oh, okay. Channel. It must be a different outlet. It's because yeah, Amazon oh, sells it for sixty one ninety nine. Okay. But that's, I mean, it's so cheap. The the uh, larger one, the two terabyte, is like one hundred and nineteen regular price. Oh, oh, I I know what I did. I actually linked the Gen three one just a second ago. That was yeah, one the, Gen, oh. the the Gen four. This is that's all about the Gen four. So if you want to get yes, slightly higher theoretical peak, you know, sequential transfer speeds, that's what this will get you over the Gen three stuff, like the P three that Josh keeps on alluding to every week. Alluding is uh, an incredible value, but it's Gen 3. So you have to be okay with that. Picks of the week. Josh, is this your Me? pick? What is this? Okay. This is my pick. So anyway, <clears throat> my cat was destroying my couch, and so I needed a scratching post. And I looked at all the options, and I came up with this one. And as is I was it building it... with cocaine? Is that how you uh, got her to? Maybe I'm not sure, but I'll tell you, I was building it, and uh, within five minutes, the cat was already laying on the top. Uh, I, I, I I created the little cubby hole. She was in there. Uh, she made it very very hard for me to uh, finish <laughs> the entire thing because she just was all over it and has been ever since. And so yes, even even the kitties need love too. And for only thirty seven dollars, it it's 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 you know inexpensive. It's reasonably sized, and it's got multiple activities for kitties. And that's you, you got to not keep your kitty bored. You You've brought them. peace. It's peace in your household with this. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. No, she she loves this damn thing. It's. Really? It's funny. I didn't think it would be that big of a deal, but no. Jeremy, Jeremy, order, order now. He's all over it. Yeah, I have ordered, go, I have owned many scratching posts, mm-hmm. which have been returned in mint condition like a year later or given <laughs> away because they didn't touch them at all. Wow. 
Yeah, I, I don't know why, but she she I started building this, and she instantly dug it. Could it be all the catnip you were rubbing all over it? Could no, no, no catnip. That doesn't work. I've tried, no. and no, okay. it's it's. Oh yeah, you're trying to be smart, so yeah, we're gonna just keep ignoring you. Yeah. Anyway, yes, Jeremy, your pick this week. It's cold outside. There's no kind of atmosphere. I'm all alone, more or less. 35 years ago today, the BBC put on a comedy show based in space. Yes, tonight is the 35th anniversary of the first episode of Red Dwarf. Uh, I'm wearing my Jupiter Mining Corps t-shirt. If you don't know what Red Dwarf is... Don't buy the link that I put in. I just wanted to find the entire collection because they've been going on and my God, Greg Berry has gotten a little bit older than he used to be. Charles the same. It's these guys did some brilliant stuff. Uh, as it gets older, as every episode, every, every series does, it, it doesn't quite hold it, but there's still some brilliant moments. But honestly, the first couple of seasons, if if you don't know them, you owe it to yourself to find out about these. They're quick, they're funny, and they're well worth the investment. I was Here's like, one that's seventy three percent off. It's just fifty three seventy was oh, one ninety nine. That, that is much better priced. Well, I'm it's also American. Is- well, it was Canadian oh. price and there was sending. Is the exchange rate that bad right now? Uh, no, we're just getting hosed. Okay. A bunch of hosers getting hosed. What can I say? I think we're about like 73 cents, 78 cents, maybe. Oh, man. I don't know why. Not great. Brett, it doesn't make any sense. Your pick this week. Well, for a technology-related show, I'm going to keep with exactly where we're going here, and my pick will also be nothing to do with technology, but it will have everything to do with tonight's episode. And tonight's episode is episode 711. I had no idea that there was an entire website dedicated to buying 7-Eleven gear, shirts, outerwear, headgear, accessories, and whatnot. I'm just, I'm sort of blown away by this. This one's I for no you. Idea. Look at this. This is like a I pro know. manual transmission yeah. 7-Eleven car club t-shirt. I, 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 might, I might just have to get one of these just because it's just outrageous. It's just $25. And if you buy two, you can pay in four industry installments with you top know, pay. I, I, I think I might want a shirt that just says big gulp on it or little bite. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if you go back, this correctly. it's actually available. If you wear both back, of those back, at once, back, look. it'll confuse many people. Yeah. So a man you know understand I, that I it was the, a 7 Eleven. It was a 7 Eleven in America where the, the, the racers used to hang out, meet up, and then go off to race. Sure. Is that what this sort that, of that's, is? That is sort of is a, is a throwback to that. Okay. But if you scroll down, you'll see some more interesting ones that are like, oh, slushy. Slurpee. There's, there's oh, here's the big gulp. Slurpee. There you go. Big, different colors. Big gulp shirt. Oh, yeah. So you can get a shirt that literally says big gulp. How big it. can you get it? It looks like it stops at XX oh. XL, but it's unavailable. Maybe it's So what is that? Uh, 128 Ooh. ounces? Yeah. If, if you go back, I believe they also have one called Little Bite. You can never go back. If you don't. If browser. you don't bookmark this, I'm going to be disappointed. If I'm not, I'm not seeing gonna, I'm not going to bookmark it. 7-Eleven active outerwear from people later, I'm going to be disappointed. Uh, do they have pants? Wait, I'm seeing 7-Eleven sells active outerwear. I thought active it was more outerwear. sedentary outerwear. Mm. Okay, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> there it is. Going I'm sorry. It's store l- wear. It's Lil Bite. Uh, bottom right, you just passed it. What? Lil Bite. Lil bottom Bite. Right. There we go. Lil Bite. That's a kid's yeah. tea. Nice. You can even well, get, you get the whole family involved. Yes. Pictures of donuts. And here we go. Here's the car gulps. theme. At dusk we ride. Uh, yes, cars of seven. I mean, it's just the shirts. I mean, as you can see, there's outerwear, headgear, various other accessories. I'm, I'm just. I. This is a side of Seven Eleven that I didn't even know existed. 
It wasn't until we arrived Capitalism, at the 711th man. Capitalism. episode Someone is that always I even bothered willing to, to buy look. something. Mm-hmm. The new Radio Shack site, somebody points out. Yeah. Anyway, mm. 7-Eleven. Uh, Shirts, we, hats. Getting back to actual tech, uh, well, PC hardware. <laughs> My pick this week is, I saw a picture of one of these earlier, and it's just, it's this is just straight up hardware porn. I mean, it's, Asus has this new Pro WS, that's their workstation series, W790 series workstation motherboard for that sweet new Intel Xeon W3400 CPU we were talking about earlier. And look, look at this thing. I mean, that's just, that's just big and, and very wide. I don't know uh, what level of expanded ATX that would be. Look, XXXL. look at how many by eight ports, the uh, by eight, you know, power is being applied to the board. Uh, One, at least two, two, uh, I three, see three, three. There may be another. Oh, there plus there's another six pin by the SATA. Yeah. 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 There's lots. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. PCI Express full length by 16 slots. You have your eight channel memory support. And this looks like a Threadripper board, but it's, it's an Intel board. Built from the ground up for overclocking, says this uh, Edge Up Asus blog post. That's, and I do uh, like Sapphire Rapids. That's a better name than we've had in a while. Mm-hmm. This Although it's Fear Blackboard. I'm just, aesthetically speaking, this is just a delightful looking uh, piece of uh, probably extremely expensive gear. I have not seen a price for this yet. But I mean, this is just uh, an impressive looking uh, thing. I'm glad they didn't water cool the chipset. Did you see their issue with EK? No. Oh, metals mixing. Re- oh, recalls. you don't want to mix metals. Well, Why do they? Somebody Why do they care. mix copper and aluminum in the same and loop? nickel well, you know and all those they have things? To, to, it's it's disaster. They're, they're big fans of Horizon Dawn, and they just like alloys. I don't know. I just remember Corsair was one of the hey, first buddy. to have a water cooler that mixed metals. And after yep. about three months, it would just clog up because there was so much corrosion. Hey, buddy, do you have an electron to spare? You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Over and over. Yeah, again. man. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Oh, yeah. I've got so many. Just real electrons. Just... invite Ion over real... to oh, the party. Yeah. yeah. Luckily, we've got this uh, conductive liquid that's moving around that we can just lend that to and just carry that where it needs to go. Yeah. I think it's time to call this one oh. a day or a night oh. or whatever. Does Thank anybody have God. any Thank pithy God. thoughts or should we just... Josh always has pith. You know, it's... it's it's. I'm reminded of this constantly when recording the podcast. Comedy prolonged becomes tragedy, but tragedy prolonged becomes comedy. And I'm not sure which spot we're at now, but it ain't good. It's a thick morass of people pretending to know what they're talking about. Well, at least I am. And so we've got to stop it at that before I incriminate anybody else on this podcast. Uh.